Welcome to another AI demo video breakdown. Although for once, unlike the one debunking the claims about Devon and Zepwork video, or the one pointing out the poor code that was glossed over in the Claude 3.5 Sonnet demo video, the video I'm breaking down today has no exaggerations, no poor code being glossed over, no cherry-picked problems that are known to be similar to the ones that the AI has been trained on, and no time jumps that hide what the AI actually did. In short, this is the kind of AI demo video that I wish companies would make, but they never do. So I made this one myself. And here's an extra bonus feature that companies will never put in their videos. I'm repeating exactly the same problems on four different AI products in sequence so you can see how they compare with each other. This video you're watching now is a summary of what happened during that process. I'll be showing excerpts and screenshots, giving timestamps for specific things that happened so you can go look for yourself if you want to. Along the way, I'll be discussing what I learned, what I think that means for AI replacing programmers, and for programmers that want to use AI, how they might be able to make themselves more productive. And I'm going to talk about what changes I'm personally making based on the results. That demo video is also available here on YouTube. A link to it is in the description. It started as a two hour screen recording, but I doubled the speed before I uploaded it. So the YouTube version is roughly an hour long. Everything's there though. It only has two cuts or edits in it. Neither involve the AI doing anything and they're both clearly marked and explained. So no funny business, nothing hidden. Now, if you don't trust me, if you think I have an agenda, feel free to watch it and point out any mistakes I might have made. If this video does well and people like it, I might do more videos and comparisons, in which case I'd also love to hear your suggestions about what else you'd like to see or what you'd like to see me do differently. But you can watch that other video for any reason, although I wouldn't recommend watching it end to end because watching me type is boring as f This is Ian Random Bugs. My name is Carl. I've been a software professional for 35 years and I'm on a quixotic quest to eradicate bugs on the internet. Toward that end, I spend a bunch of time looking at AI code generation because if we're not careful, AI can create way more bugs way faster than we can actually deal with. But unlike some stupid tech bubbles we've had, AI does have some actual uses. And so I'm trying to separate the value from the hype. Today, I'm comparing four different AI code generation tools. GitHub Copilot, which is the one most people have heard of if they've heard of any at all. Cursor, which is a downloadable editor with AI integration built into it. Codium, which like Copilot is a service that plugs into Visual Studio Code or other editors. And PyCharm from JetBrains with JetBrains own AI integration installed. None of these companies are paying for this in fact, I'm paying my own money for Copilot, Cursor, and JetBrains. The only reason I'm not paying Codium is because I can do everything I did in this demo using their free plan, so I didn't have to pay them. Past that, I'm not really going to talk about prices here because I don't have any guarantee that the prices I'm paying won't change by the time you see this. So you're on your own for figuring out what the prices are that you would have to pay at the time that you're looking if you want to do that. It's also the case that the AI companies are constantly adding new features and they're retraining their models and adding new things. So please understand this video reflects the state of the AI landscape as of the beginning of September, 2024. In the future, the results will likely change. If you're watching this a year from now, it's probably completely different. So understand this is always gonna be a point in time. One problem with all the company recorded AI demos is they keep cherry picking specific problems to let their AIs work on. Um, I didn't want to do that, so I found an impartial test, and I actually think it's kind of cool. So I'm using a service called Code Crafters as the benchmark for these demos. It's a programmer learning site with programming challenges. These aren't toy or leak code crap problems. They're challenges with good step-by-step -step instructions that build simplified versions of open source services. They have a bunch of different challenges available to take. Usually at least a couple of them are free. Currently the build your own interpreter and build your own grep challenges are free. But for the demo today, I'm using their build your own HTTP server challenge. And that means asking each of the AIs to build a simplified web server in Python. And I'm using Code Crafters challenge to prompt them and to grade them on each step. So that way I'm impartial as I can. I'm not the one that's actually deciding whether they did a good job or not. Um, and they're all being judged the same because they're all being judged by a program. Building an HTTP server also, given instructions, is something that's perfectly reasonable to expect a professional programmer to be able to do. It's not a toy leak code problem. It doesn't require that you have happened to have seen that problem before. It means something. So I think it's actually a really good test, a much better test than a lot of the benchmarks. And given the number of open source web servers that are out there, it's something that would certainly have been in any modern AI's training set. So an AI ought to be able to do it, right? 
And being frank, I work with an unfortunately high percentage of web developers that seem to have no idea how a web server really works under the covers. And it's a really useful thing to understand if you're trying to troubleshoot a problem. Now, full disclosure, CodeCrafters is not sponsoring this video and they haven't paid me anything, but they did give me a free upgrade to a paid membership and they gave me an affiliate link, which is below. If you use that link below, it's free to sign up and the no cost challenges, you can do as many of those as you want. And if you do end up deciding to upgrade at some point, you'll get 40% off. Now, the way I tested the AIs is I took each step of the challenge objective. I had the AI code, or at least try to code a solution to it, and then committed that code and pushed the change to a Git URL for that repository. When the code crafter server gets a code push, they build and test the code, they report back whether the code passed the test or not. And if it did, it's time to go on to the next stage, which adds new features to the one that was just completed. If not, then I took the error output from the challenge and I gave the AI that error. And I said, hey, this didn't work, fix it. Um, that AI made whatever changes to the code that it thought it needed to make. I pushed that to the server again, lather, rinse, repeat. It's a really clever mechanism and it's a workflow that is really, really good for evaluating AIs. Now for this challenge, they give you an initial file to get started. You uncomment a couple of lines of it and then it just opens a socket for a client to listen to. The first real part of the challenge is to add code to that file that just returns 200 OK to the client. All four AIs failed the first challenge on their first try. Not an auspicious start. The one of them that got closest was PyCharm, which is part of the JetBrains suite and using the JetBrains AI. It at least knew that the response was supposed to be sent to the client socket instead of the server socket, which is where all the other AIs tried to send it. Although PyCharm didn't bother to set up the client socket first, so of course it didn't work. They all fairly quickly got it working though once I gave them the error output from the CodeCrafters tests. But that was the first real difference, and it's indicative of the way things turned out. The PyCharm JetBrains AI tended to make things more complicated. It generally wrote code that's closer to the way that an HTTP server should eventually work than the others. More about that later. But PyCharm JetBrains got things wrong a lot. It ended up making things far more complicated than the other AIs even attempted. And with more complicated code, generally comes buggier code. And that was often true in this case. It was also, in my opinion, the most finicky, irritating, and frustrating error integration of the four, which is weird since it's one of the two that they actually control both sides of it. So I'm not really a fan. Moving on to our second challenge, we're supposed to check and see if the path that the client asked for was just slash. So if they're looking for the root of the repository. If so, we return 200 OK, just like last time. But if the path isn't just slash, we're supposed to return a 404 not found. You've all seen 404s before. Codium and Cursor got this one without any problem. JetBrains PyCharm went an extra mile and actually moved all the code to a try accept block. I really appreciate that because that's a good idea, but it came back to bite it later. Copilot though failed utterly. Copilot stuck in this if statement. If client address one equals 4221. First off, that's not what was asked for. Like nobody told us to do that. But worse, the logic is wrong and it will only work by chance like one out of every 60 something thousand attempts. So 4221 is the port part of the server address. But Copilot here is comparing it to the port part of the client address. And the TCP port of the client is randomized. So it's just not gonna work. This is exactly as stupid as comparing the last four digits of your phone number to the last four digits of the incoming caller ID number when someone tries to call you or send you a text to see if you're going to accept the call or not. And it would work about as well. I made multiple attempts trying to get Copilot to figure out that's what was wrong. I even directly told it that the if statement was wrong and why, and it still wasn't capable of fixing it. So I eventually just told Copilot to remove the if statement completely. And that was pretty indicative too. GitHub Copilot was by far the worst of the four AIs that I looked at today. I ended up giving up on Copilot by the end completely because I just, I ran out of patience before it completed the last challenge and the other AIs had all gotten it right at that point. The next step in the challenge was to check and see if the URL path starts with slash echo slash. And if so, to send the rest of the path after echo back to the client in the response body. PyCharm and Cursor got this right off. Codium ended up deleting a needed but unrelated chunk of the code. Um, I'm not sure if that was actually the AI's fault or something in the editor integration, but either way, it 
some stuff got deleted that shouldn't have gotten deleted that was from the previous step. And in the process of fixing that, it temporarily lost the code that handled the case of a single slash. Now, that's a problem that AIs have had a lot, both in this demo and elsewhere in my experience. You ask them to add a new feature, and they do that, but in the process, they break one of the old features. Um, I talked about that in my video on software testing in an AI world. Link below if you haven't seen that one. Copilot also introduced a regression here. But worse, it also, for some unfathomable reason, started insisting on sending hello world back in the response body. No idea why. If you want to cut to the chase now, we have enough information. Copilot was absolutely the worst, hands down. JetBrains PyCharm tried the hardest, but it messed up a bunch of the details and it kept digging. It ended up in third place of the four. Cursor did the best. It only had to be corrected once on the very first step, and Codium came in a close second, and it's the only free one of the bunch, at least at the moment, at least for individuals. The real loser, though, was Python itself, which, if you've seen one of my pre previous videos about my experience with Python, would not surprise you. Turns out AI editor integrations don't seem to be good at handling meaningful white space, so Python programmers using any of these tools should expect to have to deal with that all the time. So, I've got three more steps to show you of the challenge. I've got more things that the AIs got wrong. I've got some more insights into AI code generation, but if all you want to know is what order did the AIs come in, there's your answer. And it only took three steps of the challenge to separate them. So moving on to step four, we start having to look at the header fields that the client is sending. If the path is slash user dash agent, then we should send back the value of the user agent header in the response body. Codium and cursor got this easy. Copilot made a mess when trying to fix it. And then it made more of a mess when it would tried to fix the thing that I told it was wrong, and I just I ended up fixing it manually. PyCharm went right off the rails. So instead of working with headers as strings, like all the other ones did, it tried to make them into a dictionary. And that's the way it's usually done in real life, and that's cool. But it took seven attempts and a lot of ending from me for it to actually get it working. So maybe trying too hard. Partly this was because of the fact that JetBrains had put a try block around the logic, so when it made a syntax mistake in trying to make the dictionary, it triggered the exception block, and that made it harder for the AI to figure out where the problem was, because instead of this happening up here, something down here was running. And it was confusing to me too, to be honest. And the try block it did put in was just stupid. <laughs> All it did was log the exception and then fail silently. To implement that correctly, it should have returned an HTTP 500 code to the client, and that would have made debugging a lot easier if it had done that. There's an old great quote from Brian Kernahan, debugging is twice as hard as writing the code in the first place. Therefore, if you write the code as cleverly as possible, you are, by definition, not smart enough to debug it. JetBrains AI seemed to prove that true once again here. Um, it ended up writing code that was that seemed to have been at the end edge of its ability to be able to comprehend it all, and so when something went wrong in it, it just couldn't figure out what was going on. Step five was just putting a loop around the existing code so it could handle more than one request per run. They all got that one right. The last step I did for this test, which isn't the end of the whole HTTP challenge, but it was as much as I thought would fit in a video, was returning a file if that file exists on disk in the right path. JetBrains and Cursor did fine. Copilot. Copilot did so badly, I just, I gave up on it. Codium did better than the video might make it look because I had forgotten earlier to click on the go to next stage button on the CodeCrafter site. So I thought it had passed the test, but in fact, it was just rerunning the previous set of tests and it took me a while to figure out what I had done wrong. So if you watch the whole video, it, it's kind of confusing. Um, once I figured that out though, and I got the environment right, Codium had just made one small syntax issue that I hadn't realized in the first place. It wasn't calling decode on the network path, and so it was trying to combine the, um, the string that came from the command line argument with binary data from the URL. And you're not allowed to, to combine those two like that in Python, so it had to call decode. It was really simple for it to fix once I actually figured out what was going on and gave it the right error. And that's where I figured I had enough information to make this video, and I stopped. If I had kept going, the challenges would have gotten harder, but the AIs were already having problems with just the task that CodeCrafters classifies as easy. Now, if this video does well, and folks want, I'll make more of these demos with harder problems in other languages. I expect they'll all do much worse. But what is obvious from what did happen is there's a ton of room for improvement, and that I'm not worried about the AIs being able to do programmer jobs anytime soon. And I know that none of the AIs completed all six of the fairly simple tasks that were broken down for them step by step in a very clear way, which is a far, far easier scenario than even the most junior programmers are generally expected to handle in the real world. That said, just because the AIs can't 
actually do a programmer's job doesn't mean that some non-technical MBA out there won't think that it can because of all the hype and arrange for an entire department to get laid off. So it's important to try to get facts, like actual facts, in front of real people. And I'm trying. But that said, a lot of the work did get done, and that's not nothing. I'm definitely going to continue personally to happily pay for cursor, and I'll start using it more often. I'll probably use Codium from time to time as well to see how it evolves. I'm definitely not going to be using Copilot anymore, at least not until the next major upgrade. I was I was actually shocked. Copilot's the one I've used the most, and I was actually really shocked at how bad it was when it went head to head with the other one. I'm not going to bother using PyCharm's JetBrains either. If I wasn't going to be making more videos like this, I would definitely stop paying for Copilot and JetBrains now. As it is, I might keep up my subscription just to facilitate more demos, but I don't expect to actually use them for real work outside of testing anytime soon. And at this point, I can't recommend that anyone else use the current versions of either Copilot or JetBrains either. And I find it fascinating that the two most established companies, GitHub and JetBrains, both of which have been around for 20 plus years, did far worse in this test than Cursor and Codium, who each seem about three years old, but I can't just tell you that newest startups are better because the company that made Devon was a newish startup and I certainly can't recommend them. But I can recommend CodeCrafters. It's a cool service and it made the comparison so much easier to do and so much more meaningful than the stupid toy benchmarks we actually see. And I've had fun playing with myself. So if that sounds like it might be interesting to you, I'd appreciate it if you click on the link for them below. But until further notice, it's still a buyer beware world out there when it comes to AI. And I'll keep doing my best to try to separate the hype from the value. Wish me luck. Thanks for watching. Let's be careful out there.